682 Jefferson Avenue. This is the apartment building that sent me on my journey to discover the truth on what was happening in bed a place that I've called home off and on for 30 plus years. Being a native New Yorker, I've had the opportunity to live all over the city, as well as the country, from California to Alaska to Iowa, just to name a few. I've also spent time living in Queens as well as short stints in the Bronx and Manhattan, but Brooklyn was always where my heart is. One spring evening, on my way home from work, a few doors down from the apartment building where I live, I was approached by a young, hip-looking white guy who looked to be somewhere in his mid-twenties. He told me he had an amazing proposition for me. He asked me, with a bit of urgency in his voice, if I knew who owned the aforementioned property that being 682 Jefferson Avenue. I responded that I did know the owner, and without the slightest hesitation, he dug into his pocket and passed me a business card and proclaimed that if I was able to get him in contact with the owner and he was able to purchase the property, he would give me 5000 in cash. That's right, five grand in cash for delivering the owner of the building with the hope that he would be able to purchase this. While the thought of the money was tempting, I mean, who could turn down some free cash for establishing contact? My focus and attention immediately gravitated towards all the things that I saw happening around me since I moved back into the neighborhood. After being away for eight years, everything is for sale. They don't give two fucks about us. And we so bent on being equal, trying to assimilate. You know what I mean? That, that both of the people like, like Jay-Z, and all these stars, they all they, they want to be like the one moving their circles. And it's a fact though, economically, personal power, we will the most per capita than anybody in this country. It's been mad bread experiences, unique, compared to anybody else that lives in that style, Brooklyn, or any, any other period, whether it's Chicago, or any experience, experience, you know? We are, uh, we're treated as an underclass. And a lot of times, you act how you're treated. Okay. So, 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 so I mean, what are what are what are some of the changes that you've seen in this neighborhood, in this area, in the last ten years? Well, uh, full disclosure, I, I was uh, away for a while. You know, okay. Things I was doing, and it was almost a, uh, I came from a culture shock because Caucasians are in here. They're coming in, in droves. They're buying up property, and this is a neighborhood that they didn't want back in the days. They want no, want no parts of us. And now they're buying anything that they have and they're buying. And we're selling them. Okay. And, we're selling them. and I just, that was the biggest shock. And it's just not, you know, Caucasian. It's like, you know, the, the hipsters, you know, the pink hair, the green hair, you know, the chain on the neck, opening clubs, eateries, businesses, and we patronize them. Not saying that it's, it's, it's wrong, but I think it's wrong when we don't patronize our own. Okay. And rather, when they come in here, we give them our money. True. You no, know, and, it, and it's a fact. It's, it's a, uh, our money stays in our community for six hours on average. I mean, the whole day, six hours. Run right through it. This is why we don't, we don't really have anything to show for our hard work. Because everybody here isn't a, a, a thug or a vagrant or criminal. And you can see because they're buying property from black people.